Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new updates in regards to the upcoming mission to the Saturn's moon Titan that's actually going to be answering a very important question, a question that's been bugging us for a very long time. Are we alone? Is there any other life out there in the solar system except for planet Earth? Something that's actually going to be also tackled by another mission we discussed recently, the Clipper mission to Jupiter's Europa, but something that specifically is going to be the primary mission for the upcoming mission known as Dragonfly. The mission that's going to arrive to Titan and the mission that's going to be delivering something that we know is going to work here really well. A nuclear-powered helicopter that's going to be doing a lot of science on the surface. A Dragonfly spacecraft. And very recently several studies have been published officially telling us exactly what the scientists are going to be doing here, where the helicopter is going to be landing, and even telling us a little bit more about the instruments and the science that it's going to be conducting on the surface. So for example, here's the list of the instruments and the different types of experiments they're going to be conducting here. With all of this available in this paper that you can find in the description, and this more recent paper that explores the actual landing site, identifying the specific geographic location, the reason for the landing there, and essentially creating relatively accurate maps for the potential first few days, mapping specific parts of the region and also finding exact places where the landing can occur and discovering some exciting areas that can actually be explored in the beginning. But here I guess it's important to understand what's already been done on Titan, what we know about it and why it's such an exciting object. Way more exciting than Europa and the Clipper mission we've discussed in a previous video. So first of all, as you might already know, NASA has already been to Titan once. As a matter of fact, part of the Cassini mission that used to orbit Saturn included this right here a tiny lander that would go into the Titan's atmosphere and whose main purpose was to actually try to map and explore the atmosphere of Titan. Now interestingly, during its descent that took approximately 3 hours, it was also able to take a few pictures. And this is where basically the mystery began. The scientists had no idea what they were going to be landing into and they had no idea if there was a liquid surface, a hard surface or if the probe is even going to survive this landing. As a matter of fact, scientists initially thought that there was a global liquid ocean of methane and ethane and that the probe is just going to sink. And because of this they didn't even include anything that would require some kind of a drilling or some kind of a surface exploration because they didn't expect the probe to survive. And the probe known as Huygens officially landed on Titan in 2005. You're going to see some of the images from the landing in a few seconds. But the probe itself was designed to either float or potentially land on the surface because, like I said, nobody knew what was going to happen. And so if it was some kind of a liquid, it would just float around taking initial pictures. But there was hard surface and these are the first images of the so-called rocks that are basically made out of different types of ices. Here's the landing itself. And so even though most of the experiments here were atmospheric, the probe overall was able to conduct some science determining what the surface is like as well. Although most of the science was really done because of two things, the landing itself and also the various effects we see from the shadow of the parachute as it slowly lands on the surface. So it became clear to the scientists that this is definitely a hard object that does seem to contain some lakes, but for the most part there is definitely surface here to land on. But because these were the only images we had from the surface of Titan, very little else was known about it. As a matter of fact, Cassini that orbited Saturn for 13 years was unfortunately unable to explore the surface of this object because of the extremely thick methane atmosphere. And so this right here is really the best pictures we have of the surface of Titan, in this case created by Cassini's radar. And even this shows us that there are certain morphological structures resembling planet Earth, including things like dunes, lakes, mountains, and even features that resemble something that was swept by the wind. More importantly, there were even signs of liquid cycle, although in this case the liquid is probably either ethane or methane, not water. So basically it was raining here, but the rain was very different from what we're used to. Because methane and ethane have very different liquid effects compared to water, all of the other features here would be also extremely different. For example, if there is ice on that water, instead of floating on the surface, it's most likely just going to sink to the bottom of the lake. And because Titan is really the only object we know of out there that has very thick atmosphere that possesses some kind of a liquid cycle and also seems to have other effects including some kind of a geological effect, this was always the prime candidate for essentially exploring the idea of extraterrestrial life. But we had to find a way to land here and to explore the surface conducting all of the science. 
just using a telescope or some kind of an orbiter was not going to be enough. And so some of the initial suggestions called for some kind of a balloon mission where the balloon would basically fly around the atmosphere, possibly landing once in a while and conducting the science on the surface. But as NASA started to develop the idea of a helicopter, which by the way is also on my t-shirt right here, a Martian helicopter known as Ingenuity, similar ideas started to be developed to be possibly used on Titan as well. And because the measurements from Huygens probe established that the atmosphere here is actually really thick, possibly even four times thicker than the one on Earth, and also because the gravity here is much, much weaker, all of this suggested that using a helicopter would actually be much easier than anything else, because the flight here is so much easier than even planet Earth, making this a perfect object for a helicopter-based exploration. And as the mission was developed, more and more exciting news and exciting discoveries started to come out out of old Cassini data as well. For example, there were several detections of unusual methane cycles that at least on Earth usually are produced by various types of life. The scientists have also discovered quite a lot of organic molecules, with certain types of molecules being extremely heavy, with a molecular weight of over 100, which did imply some kind of a complexity of chemistry on the surface. And as a side note, the only reason they only discovered molecules up to a molecular weight of 100 is because the mission was never designed to find anything heavier. Originally, the scientists did not think that even these complex molecules would exist in the atmosphere of Titan, which implies that there's a lot of complex chemistry going on here, with this unusual object very likely possessing all of the required energy needed to potentially host life. But obviously not life anything like here on planet Earth. The cycle here is methane in methane. The temperatures here are super, super cold, about minus 180 degrees Celsius or about minus 300 Fahrenheit. But all of these conditions create perfect environment for unusual carbon ice chemistry, with things like methane and nitrogen clouds potentially creating all of the effects that are similar to the effects we observe on our own planet. Titan is really as alien of a planet as we can imagine, and if we actually find life here, it's going to be one of the biggest groundbreaking discoveries of the last few hundreds of years, allowing us to finally start answering the question of life out there, alien life, possibly on other planets around our own galaxy. But obviously, the much bigger question is going to be raised if we find nothing here, even though all of the ingredients are there, the signs are there, the actual composition, the liquid, the energy, the methane patterns, everything seems to suggest potential life. If we find nothing, that's when the mystery is going to kind of become more mysterious. And that's basically why the mission has been planned and why it's now definitely going to be happening in the next decade or so. It's actually going to be launching in 2027, but it is going to take some time before it reaches Saturn. As a matter of fact, the actual landing is planned for 2034. 12 years from when I'm making this video. But we do have a lot of detail about everything about this mission already. So first of all, where is it going to be landing? Well, the scientists decided to choose one of the craters located around the equatorial region of Titan. It sort of looks like this, it's approximately 90 kilometers in diameter, and it's known as Selk. It's most likely an impact crater, created by some kind of an asteroid collision, which means that during the collision it very likely brought up a lot of things from within Titan, and spread it across a larger area very close to the rim of the crater itself. Which means that by investigating the location of this crater, it might be possible to investigate not just the surface of Titan, but also the internal part as well. A lot of the internal stuff probably came out during the collision. Although the actual landing is going to occur in the location known as the Shangri-La Dunes, extremely close to the crater, because the scientists think it might be actually safer to land here as opposed to the crater itself. And these are of course sand dunes created by some kind of a wind interaction on the surface of Titan, which by itself is already a pretty important scientific area that seems to have been created in the same way that dunes are created here in various deserts on planet Earth. And so by using some of the previous Cassini images along with the data from Huygens lander, the scientists realized that this was probably the best location for the rover craft to land. The craft that's going to be approximately 450 kilograms in weight and that's also going to contain relatively large blades, approximately one meter across. And it's also going to be able to fly relatively quick, approximately 36 kilometers per hour or 22 miles per hour. All of this using nuclear energy. But once in a while it's going to land and stay on the surface using some of its instruments that are described in one of the papers to essentially drill in, collect some of these samples, and then use the internal analysis instrument to conduct all kinds of spectroscopy, identifying exactly what's inside but also specifically looking for life. 
making this particular helicopter the first to officially incorporate Search for Life as one of the more important part of its mission. The last one was the Viking probe in 1976. And so one of its goals is to actually look for chemical biosignatures potentially produced by bacterial life that might be present here but also exploring the active methane cycle that we know that the Moon possesses, trying to understand exactly how it works and what it produces on the surface. And if there's no life found, it's also going to be exploring the prebiotic chemistry, potentially identifying the reasons why life did not form here and what prevents life from forming. In terms of its scientific goals, it's probably one of the most important missions of the last few decades, way more important than anything we've ever sent to Mars, Venus or other objects. And the mission is going to teach us so much more about how life formed on planet Earth. And so essentially for approximately 16 Earth days, the helicopter is going to be flying around, collecting all of the pictures and all of the atmospheric data, then it's going to land and conduct a lot of chemical science for approximately 16 Earth days as well. And that's because a single day on Titan is approximately 16 Earth days. So during daylight, when there is a little bit of sunlight, it's going to be taking pictures and flying around, during nighttime, when it's really dark, it's going to be conducting chemical science. Although, even during daytime, it's still extremely dark. The actual amount of light that Titan gets during, for example, noon, is actually less than 1% of what we get on Earth. And so even during the brightest day, it's still going to look like an extremely dark night on our own planet. Although one potential problem here that we cannot currently anticipate is the problem of rain. We obviously have no idea what happens if it does rain here, and what's going to happen to the helicopter if the methane or ethane rain starts to basically freeze on its surface. It might actually end the mission prematurely or at least disable the helicopter from flying further. In other words, this is one unknown that we currently cannot prepare for. So at the moment, nobody really knows what kind of weather patterns we can expect on the surface of this beautiful moon. But in some sense, by going here and by exploring this object, it's like we're looking back on Earth billions of years ago. To some extent, some of the chemical signatures here resemble something that we think might have existed on our own planet, either before life formed or during the formation of early life. Although obviously much, much colder. But more importantly, by exploring the area around this crater, we're also going to be able to explore the interior mantle ocean that might have released some of its content when this initial collision occurred and when all of the material from within Titan got deposited around the crater, leaving all of the chemical signs for us to explore. Moreover, this particular location potentially has biosignatures from any water-based life that might exist inside Titan or any hydrocarbon life that might exist on the surface. In other words, it allows the scientists to explore any potential life that might exist either on the surface or within Titan itself. Or at least signatures of previous life that might have existed here that should be deposited as very complex organic molecules that would be impossible to produce naturally. With a lot of other goals of this mission being more chemical in nature, understanding various cycles including various ethane, methane and hydrocarbon cycles, and figuring out what kind of organic molecules exist here, how they were most likely formed on the surface, and what sort of geological processes play a role in creating the surface as we see it today. Because this is such an alien object, it's kind of impossible for the scientists to currently understand what they're actually looking at. Even these dunes right here are sort of created in ways we cannot understand. We know that there's wind involved, but because the gravity here is different as is the atmospheric pressure, the exact process is still unknown. But at least for now, we don't even know what the mission is going to look like. This is just a preliminary concept, and so it's really only in the next five years that we're going to start seeing actual helicopter being developed with all this possibly becoming more complex as new technology becomes available to create something even better. But at least for now, the scientists are really clear on the science goals, the objectives for this mission, and the location site, and everything else we're going to be learning about in the next 5 years before the mission launches. And so until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, check out that previous related video about the mission to Europa that's actually going to occur a few years before this one, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.